Welcome back AP Calc AB students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at video number four covering topic 7-8. We're just looking at more and more real world examples of how we can use a differential equation model. The model we're using is our good friend Kecht, and we're going to stick with that model uh, for this one final example, and things will start to change a little bit for our next couple examples. So we got like a, a real true blue business advertising type of problem here. Sort of a la Dunder and Mifflin Incorporated. Let's let's see if this makes some sense here. Four months after it stops advertising, a manufacturing company who, let's just say, sells paper products, noticed that its sales have dropped from 100,000 units per month to 80,000 units per month. Now, if the sales follow an exponential pattern of decline, what will they be to the nearest unit after another two months. So this is certainly a, a, a type of problem that a company could be confronted with, although I'm sure that this one is much, much simplified, but it, I think, gives you an idea about what goes on in the business world. So basically, we've got this company, and for whatever reasons, they decided that uh, we're just not going to advertise. We're not going to put these ads on television or whatever, and they dis they, they discover that they their, their sales drop 100,000 uh, to 80,000. They want to know what continued damage will be done if this persists for a, another two months. And it's really important that we understand that this is not a linear change. And I get a lot of students that think, well, wait a minute, if we dropped 100,000 to 80,000 in four months, we could just apply that same linear change. And nope, that doesn't work because this is an exponential pattern of decline. In other words, this will follow our good friend Kecht, which will define as our A of T, which is our sales. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to try to find, to the best of our ability, the C value. And the C value is always tied to when is uh, the time going to be zero and what are the sales going to be. And it says that the sales would have initially started at 100,000. So that would be before any uh, decision maybe has been made or the decision was just made that very day, I suppose. And we know that we were selling at 100,000 uh, per month. Now let's see what's going to happen. Well, I hope that you learned from before that if T is equal to zero, then whatever the amount is, that is going to be the value of your C. You don't even have to solve uh, in this case. So we have 100,000 ect at this point, which is well on our way, right? We just need to find this value of K and then things are going to go even better. So we see that four months in, we notice that, oh no, we've got this change now where the sales are now at 80,000. So then we can go ahead and solve for 80,000 equal 100,000 e to the 4 times k power. And it looks like everything is set in place for us to be able to solve it for k. So if we divide 80,000 by 100,000, I would really like to reduce that. 80 over 100, 4 over 10, that's... Uh, just, uh, or I'm sorry, 80 over 10, 8 over 10, 4 over 5. Boy, I almost don't know my arithmetic there. But you would reduce that eventually to 4 fifths. And then we're going to take the natural log of both sides. You have probably been taking a lot of natural logs here lately. And my hope is that you see that this ln of e will disappear as soon as that 4k drops in front. We then divide by 4. And so k would be 1 fourth times the natural log of 4 fifths. That's one of many different ways that you can express k, but it would perfectly be suitable for a free response question. You would earn full credit for this. So what do we have now? What's a of t really, really looking like? Well, a of t is 100,000 times e to the k 1 fourth natural log of 4 fifths T power. And as we've said many times, you could very easily 
simplify this exponent if you wanted to, or you could just dive right in and you could plug in the t value and compute what you're supposed to compute, which is this a of t. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this to get rid of the e just for the practice. And if we do so, hopefully you realize, especially from our other videos, that t over 4 would end up being the exponent of the 4 fifths. At that point, the e to the ln cancel. And so here we have your growth model, as you probably remember seeing it from your other uh, courses in math and science. I think at this point, we can answer our question. It asks, if the sales follow this pattern, what will they be to the nearest unit after another two months? Well, there's a little bit of a trick. The common misconception might be to plug two in for t, and that is incorrect. We have to look very carefully at a very pr a provocative word here, another two months, which means we're going to go an additional two months beyond that four months. Many of you are probably already on top of this, and you see that the T is actually going to be a six, and that is 100% correct. So you've got to be very careful there. I've got a feeling that if you plugged two, you would you would get uh, an answer that wouldn't make a lot of sense. You'd likely get an answer that's less uh, than a hundred thousand, but still greater than eighty thousand, which gives it the kind of essence that it may have rebounded. But it shouldn't. This thing, this situation should continue to decline, and it does so. But you're going to find out not quite as rapidly. If you type this into the calculator, I trust that you can all do that. If we take it out to um, the units, um, uh, th three decimal places, we find out that we're selling this many units. And technically that would be per month, which I know that makes this sound like a rate and a lot of kids get confused by that. But we're basically adding up the entire amount that we sold in that specific month from the time that we stopped advertising. So we see this rate changing, um, but this is probably a, a, a decline that's likely decreasing, but not quite as fast. So it's decreasing at a, say, uh, decreasing type of rate, so to speak, concave up. So anyhow, that takes care of our last KECT problem. We want you to stick around. Two really interesting problems coming up. Example five uh, outlines my favorite. Newton's law of cooling is one of the most interesting topics with exponential growth and decay that you study in calculus. So be sure to stick around for that. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time.